Hi, it's Katrina. From giant feats of engineering inspired by nature to quirky housing that is energy efficient, here are 10 of the most impressive modern buildings in the world. Number 10. Biosphere Environmental Museum, Montreal Built as the United States Pavilion for the 1967 World Expo in Montreal, Canada, the biosphere was built to impress. It was a massive geodesic dome designed by architect Buckminster Fuller. It looks like the one at Epcot, doesn't it? The structure was originally an enclosed dome made up of steel and acrylic cells that was 248 feet in diameter and over 203 feet high. The architect tried using a complicated system of shades to control the dome's internal temperature, experimenting by trying to imitate pores and skin the way that the human body does. The idea was revolutionary but never really worked, so the shading system was disabled. The biosphere was a great success. The pavilion attracted over 5 million visitors. There was a collection of American culture and exhibits inside the dome. It had the world's longest escalator ever built at the time at 121 feet long. After the fair, the U.S. announced that it would donate the biosphere to the city of Montreal. Sadly, it caught fire and burned to a crisp in 1976 when welders were doing some work. Everything burned down but the steel skeleton, and for a long time, it was left abandoned. In 1990, Environment Canada purchased the site for $17.5 million and converted it into an interactive museum of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River water ecosystems. Additional buildings were added to the dome by architect Eric Gautier with a number of small buildings enclosed inside the original steel dome. The Biosphere de Montreal, as it's now known, presents visitors with interactive activities and exhibits about environmental issues like water pollution, climate change, air quality, eco-technology, and sustainability. There are both guided and self-guided tours, and admission is free to anybody under the age of 17. It is advertised as the only environment museum in North America. Fun fact, it made an appearance in Battlestar Galactica. Number 9. Sydney Opera House, Australia In 1957, Danish architect Jorn Utzon won an international competition to design a new theatre complex in Sydney. Construction began in 1959 on Benelong Point in Sydney Harbour. Even today, the building is considered one of the most famous and most photographed buildings in the world. The Opera House is actually a collection of multiple performing spaces, including the Concert Hall, the Joan Sutherland Theatre, the Drama Theatre, a Playhouse, a Drama Studio, and a Recording Studio. Covering over 4.4 acres of land, the Opera House is made of precast concrete shells mounted on a frame of concrete ribs. Although the building looks uniformly white from a distance, the shells are actually covered in glossy white and matte cream tiles in a chevron pattern, making it look almost like skin. The exterior walls are covered in an aggregate material using pink granite mined in Australia. Utsan was inspired by Mayan temples he had seen in Mexico, and he wanted the geometric shell formations to look like they had been pulled out of a sphere, and also like bright sails of a ship. The Sydney Opera House cost over $102 million to build and took 10 years longer than anticipated to complete. Part of the delay was the revolutionary design, which required a great deal of trial and error, as well as computer modeling to properly account for the stresses that the shells would encounter. Not only were the standard problems of gravity and load-bearing an issue, but the architects had to find a way to make the building strong in the face of the wind and weather that could arise in the harbor. Utsan was also inventing new kinds of tile. This long delay resulted in conflicts between Utsan and local officials, and he abruptly resigned from the project before it was completed. Australian architect Peter Hall took the reins and saw the Opera House through to her grand opening in 1973, which was presided over by Queen Elizabeth II. Number 8. The Wave, Denmark In 2009, the little Danish town of Vejle gained an architectural marvel, courtesy of Henning Larsen Architects. Inspired in part by the Sydney Opera House, the Wave is a luxury apartment enclosing roughly 150,000 square feet of space. The town of Vejle is in a valley, and the building's form mimics both the hills around the town and the waves on the water. It sits on the waterfront promenade of the Skytehusbukten Bay in the Vejle Inlet, right next to a marina. The Danish name for the building is Bolgen, meaning the Wave, of course. It consists of five concrete structures covered with tiles which climb straight up nine stories before sloping down like the leading edge of the wave of the water. There are five waves in all, the last one completed in 2018, and each wave holds 20 luxury apartments. 
Architecture Daily reports that the form and material of the housing allows it to be a constantly changing landscape element. During the day, the white waves are reflected in the water, and at night, the lights make them look like mountains. The wave has won many awards, including 2010's Building of the Year. Number 7. The Dancing House, Prague Designed by Croatian-Czech Vlado Mulinic and Canadian-American Frank Gehry, it was built between 1992 to 1996. The Dancing House was controversial, and in some quarters still is, because it is such a dramatic departure from the Gothic and Baroque architecture of the rest of the city. The building is unconventional, to say the least. It's built in the deconstructivist style, and its unique shape is created by 99 separate concrete panels, each with a different shape and size. The walls seem to bend like a pair of dancers, and the building is made up of two separate structures. The first is a glass tower, which is almost hourglass in shape, supported by curved pillars. The second is a longer building and features wavy moldings and unaligned windows. Do you like it? Do you think it is too different from the rest of the city? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you're new here. We'd love to have you. The dancing house is nine stories tall with two floors underground. It features mostly offices with a restaurant called Fred and Ginger operating on the ninth floor, named after American dancers Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. The building is unexpected and not something that is easily forgotten. Number six, the Gherkin, London. Speaking of a building that stands out, in the heart of London's financial district, a striking contemporary tower rises over 590 feet into the air. This is 30 St. Mary Axe, better known as the Gherkin, although that's not necessarily their favorite nickname. Designed by Norman Foster and the Arab Group, the Gherkin has 40 floors and a distinctive curved glass shape reminiscent of a pickle, or many people say something else, hence the name. The majority of the occupants of this building are business offices, but floors 38 through 40 are dedicated to food service and entertainment. A restaurant operates on the 39th floor with private dining rooms on the 38th. The 40th floor is a bar that features panoramic views of London. Everyone likes to talk about it as if it were weird, but for many architects, it is something to be admired. It is more a work of art, like a sculpture. But love it or hate it, it makes you think about architecture in a new way. Not only is the building striking from a visual perspective, it has remarkable energy efficiency. It uses double glazing and ventilation techniques to heat and cool the space, something that allows the gherkin to use only half the energy that would normally be used by another tower of its size. Remarkably, the gherkin can be seen from as far as 20 miles away. Number 5. Bird's Nest Stadium, Beijing, China Officially named the Beijing National Stadium, the Bird's Nest Stadium was built for the 2008 Summer Olympic Games. It was designed jointly by architectural firm Herzog & Demuron, architect Stefan Marbach, Chinese artist Ai Weiwei, and CADG, the Central Asia Development Group's chief architect Li Xingang. That's a lot of people for one stadium. This stadium cost nearly $428 million to complete using 121,000 tons of steel. The design is striking, with two separate structures incorporated into one. First, there is the red concrete bowl where the spectators sit and whose focal point is the stadium field. Next is the concrete exoskeleton which gives the building its trademark bird's nest appearance. The stadium is supposed to encompass Chinese culture and the pattern is representative of that on pottery. The east and west sides of the stadium are taller than the north and south sides, adding to the nest impression. Rainwater is collected 24 hours a day near the stadium, and after the water is purified, it is pumped through pipes under the field to either heat the area in winter or cool it in the summer. The stadium seats 80,000, and every single seat was considered in the design stage for maximum ventilation and airflow. Every seat is the perfect seat. The stadium will be used again for the 2022 Winter Olympic Games, making the Bird's Nest the only stadium in the world to host both a summer and winter Olympiad. Number 4. Bay Terek Tower, Kazakhstan Located in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan, the Bay Terek Tower is a monument and observation tower that became a hit with tourists for its distinctive style. The tower is meant to symbolize an old Kazakh folktale about a magical bird that laid an egg in the crevice between two branches of a poplar tree. The bird was the bird of happiness, and the tree was the tree of life. The tower stands 344 feet tall and features an observation deck that offers amazing views of the surrounding cityscape. The tower itself is made up of a single narrow shaft surrounded by white girders, the branches, that flare out at the top where they support a huge gold mirrored sphere, the egg. 
There are two elevators that go up to the observation deck, which is located inside the egg, almost 100 feet above ground level. The observation deck itself consists of two levels, one with a full 360-degree view of the city and a second level one flight up. The second level features a gold handprint of President Nursultan Nazarbayev, the first president of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Visitors can put their hand against the handprint and make a wish. There's no word if wish granting was included in the architectural designs, but you know, architecture is art. Number 3. The Guggenheim Museum, New York the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, called the Guggenheim for short, is an art museum located in Manhattan, New York. Established by the Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation in 1939, it was originally called the Museum of Non-Objective Painting, and it celebrated and continues to celebrate Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, and Modern Art. It was renamed after its founder when Mr. Guggenheim passed away in 1952. As modern in appearance as its contents, the museum was designed by famed architect Frank Lloyd Wright, possibly the most famous American architect of all time. The building is a cylinder, wider on the top than on the bottom, and is actually a long, winding ramp gallery that starts at street level and winds around until it reaches a skylight on the top level. The spiral is inspired by a Nautilus shell, and this is the only museum that Frank Lloyd Wright ever designed. It was proof of what amazing things modern architecture could do. Number 2. The Shard, London The Shard is a skyscraper in Southwark, London, England. It's the tallest building in the United Kingdom, standing 1,016 feet high. It was designed by Italian architect Renzo Piano and was built between 2009 and 2012. The view from the Shard, a privately operated open-air observation deck, opened in 2013. The Shard is a super tall skyscraper, 95 stories tall. It is clad in glass and shaped like a tall, narrow pyramid. Because of the narrowness of the top of the building, only 72 of the Shard's 95 floors are habitable. The observation deck is at the top of those habitable levels, at 801 feet off the ground. The Shard was one of the first buildings to take into account the findings of the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, after the collapse of the World Trade Center following 9-11. By incorporating the findings of the NIST's report, it is hoped that the Shard would be more resistant to a catastrophe in the event of an attack or a freak accident. Number 1. Petronas Towers, Kuala Lumpur The Petronas Twin Towers are located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and until 2004, they were the tallest buildings in the world. Even today, they are the tallest twin towers in existence. Designed by Argentinian architect Cesar Pelli, the towers were constructed over the course of two years with a distinctly modern sensibility. Made of reinforced concrete behind a steel and glass facade that was designed to resemble motifs from Islamic art, the towers are built on the world's deepest foundations, something made necessary by the depth of the bedrock itself. There are 104 concrete piles that go from 197 to 374 feet into the ground, and the raft foundation itself required 470,000 cubic feet of concrete, which was poured continuously for 54 hours straight for each tower. Wind and earthquakes can wreak havoc with tall buildings, but these towers are built with a tube-in-tube -tube design that makes them more flexible in the face of such challenges. Because it would have been difficult to import enough steel for the construction, the builders turned instead to high-strength reinforced concrete, which has the benefit of giving the towers reduced sway. It also makes the towers heavier by far than their steel cousins, which is one of the reasons for that massive foundation, which is, again, the largest in the world. While most of the tenants of the Petronas Towers are businesses, the ground floor features Surya KLCC, which is a massive 1.5 million square feet shopping mall carrying foreign luxury goods. It also has an aquarium, a science center, and an art gallery. Thanks for watching! Let me know if you'd like to see a part two of this video. There are many more amazing architectural marvels out there. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe before you leave. See you next time! Bye!